It's not due. It's not due until the Monday after spring break, and it's not due until the Monday. And I finally figured out, ha, genius, it's taken me half the semester. Well, actually, three semesters of using these, uh, these uh, where you turn in your, um, where you do your homework over the internet. Um, it's taken me three semesters to figure out, why don't I make it due? Like, if I'm going to make it due on Monday, why don't I make it due like at about 11.30 at night on Monday after we've had class so you can ask questions and then go in. <laughs> Duh! Finally, I don't know why I, I was having trouble with that concept for about three semesters, but I've got it figured out now. So it's not due until like 11.30 at night after we get the Monday we get back from spring break. Sure, yeah. That's the other reason. Oh, yeah. So, Jake just, uh, Jake just hit it on the head here. She said, well, wait a minute. Are we, all right, let's, let's hold it down now. I, I'm having to talk over people here. Uh, the, uh, um, Jake just asked a question. She just said, well, are we still having to test the Wednesday before spring break? Yes, you are. Okay? And so, um, that's, that's one of the reasons I gave you the homework, so you can work on it. Because the questions will come straight from... The homework. All right, and um, I haven't. I looked about three or four hours ago at the uh, at the uh, redo, the exam two redo, as we called it, um, and it looked like most of you did okay on it. That that tried it. Um, some of you already had a good exam score and went ah, never that, so you didn't do it. But the, and that's fine. I did it. I got like an eighteen point six. I made I made one tactical mistake on the thing. It was the one where we had to flip the. Uh, where it is the last problem, the last problem, where you had, where they doubled the time. For some reason, I thought that would double your voltage. No, silly. If you double the time, it halves the voltage. And so, um, I blew it. I, I missed that one. Um, but anyway, so, other than that, I think I did pretty good. Oh, no, I screwed up one of those. Uh, it was, did you all find it really annoying trying to do Kirchhoff's laws with that? computer dragging down and everything and having to type it. I found that really tiresome too, but oh well. Um, it beats having to grade it. So anyway, um, what's that? The, the test should have been like that. That's why we, because online, no, no, because I, because just with that and it wasn't, and just because it, and it just being extra credit, um, I was still getting I still got like four or five emails from people saying, hey, my computer crashed or it just went south on me. Uh, that, I don't want to, no. Uh -uh. It's too, many, too many things can go wrong. Just too many things can go wrong. All right? And I have to believe you. All right? The, the, in, the age of, in the age of computers and all that stuff, yes, the dog did eat the homework. All right? So, okay. All right. Here we are. Here we are again. We were doing... Resistance, resonance, we're doing all this kind of hard stuff. Let's, let's get out of this and do the E. Let's get straight to it. We talked about, um, all right, capacitance, capacitive reactance. I think we, we finished here. Um, and basically, all right, got a quick question for you. XC, XC, capacitive reactance. What is the SI units for that? Ohms, right. It's in ohms, okay? And that might, but I'm not going to give a quiz today because too many of you are gone. That's probably when I should give it, but no, nah, I don't want to. Anyway, I, I should have you figure out why that's in ohms based on the capacitance. But you could do it because you'd say Q equals uh, VC. You'd take it from there. C equals Q over V. And then when you take that Q over V and multiply it, by the frequency, you're going to get rid of the seconds because you remember what, yeah, you can figure out that it's, oh, it's, and then what you wind up with when you multiply it by the, see, then when you multiply the frequency, when you multiply charge times the frequency, frequency has the second square in the denominator. So you've got Q over seconds, that gives you what? Charge over time is current, right. So that would give you the current. Um, and so that gives you uh, current over voltage. Ta-da! Ohm's law, V equals IR. 
So there you go. So V over I. Oh, yeah, it'd be V over I. Sorry. Would equal your resistance. So that, that's how you would do that. But anyway, so this is in, this is in um, real straightforward. It's in ohms. And IRMS, VRMS, um, your book does a good job of explaining when it gives you a problem or an example to follow. It says the IRMS or the VRMS of this thing is. Now, normally, the, what does RMS stand for? Root mean squared, right, root mean squared, and, and that's, a, that's a trig algebra derivation that, excuse me, that we're not going to bother with right now. Okay, now, now we're going to look at an inductor. An inductor is done in Henry's, okay? Its, it's unit is Henry's. There's this little L here. Okay, what does this curly Q E stand for? What does that stand for? What? Curly QE is what? Voltage, right. It's voltage. It's your EMF, your electromotive force, all right? It's an EMF. And so, in other words, now think about it. If I've got, if I've got a coil, basically an inductor is a, real, is a short little solenoid. That's basically what an inductor is, all right? So if I've got a current going through this solenoid that's bouncing back and forth, what's that do? All right, so current's go like this, then it's going to go like this, it's going to go like this, go like this, this, boing, boing, boing. So it's changing that magnetic field all the time, right? Well, that's creating a back EMF inside the circuit, all right? So it's fighting the current that the voltage is trying to provide, all right? So the voltage wants to push the circuit this way, the inductor goes, ha, huh. it, it acts like a spring. It says, nah, -uh, you're not going to push the current this way, I'm going to, because I'm, going this way. And then when the current changes back around, tries to push it the other way, it goes, uh, uh and pushes it the other way, okay? Pushes against it. So therefore, it impedes the current. It causes a resistance. However, now get this straight. Get this straight. With your XC, which is your capacitive reactance, and your XL, which is your capacitive inductance, they do not eat up any power in the circuit. Okay, only the resistor does, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, only the resistor. So we're going to create, like you did in lab, didn't you all build an RLC circuit? Yeah, last week. Yeah, <laughs> so here I'm going to explain to you what you were doing. All right, the, you got the RLC circuit, um, and so only the, only the resistor eats up the power, okay? Because the, um, the inductor and the um, capacitor, what do they do? They'll slow down the current and act like a resistor, but they just store energy. Okay, they store and release energy to oppose the, oppose the current. All right, so you put those things in there to slow down the current. Remember, the whole idea behind a, behind a circuit is to reduce current. All right, that's why, you know, um, oh, and when we looked at the back EMF on, uh, in the last chapter, remember in the back EMF, when you first started something, it had a huge amount of amperage. And then once it started working, the amperage dropped way down. That's why when you're in a place or, or in your house or something, you got a few appliances, you got too many appliances running, and then all of a sudden you turn on a hairdryer, boom, it blows right away. It's not like it blows right when, you know, after it's been running for four or five minutes or two or three minutes, it blows right when you turn it on because that's where the maximum amperage is going through that thing, hits, trips the circuit that way. Okay, it's kind of a nice little, it protects us from ourselves. But anyway, all right, so I went way around the bend there to explain that the inductor um, that we're going to put in a circuit impedes it, all right, slows it down. And in our old book, we, we messed around with this guy and got some real ugly formulas and stuff, but we're not going to do that. We'll wait till 350 or 460 to mess with that some more. All right. Did you bring enough vanilla wafers for everyone? No, no, all right. What's that? No, oh, sit down. All right, now, uh, welcome, welcome, though. welcome. All right, um, anyway, so inductive reactants, it's, it, and we'll get to this phaser thing here in a minute, but based on these charts, okay? All right, we'll, we'll get to this. So in other words, what this means is, when we look at the phasers, actually, and that's what electrical engineers are always doing, 
they're looking at the phasor angles of voltage versus amperage, okay? And then, and then this one, since we start out at zero, we start out at zero, look, we've got max voltage. And then as the voltage goes down to zero, we've got max amperage. So this means that amperage follow. they say that it follows the voltage. When you have an inductor, the amperage follows the voltage through uh, a circuit, okay? All right. Okay, and this is how you compute XL. Again, this would come out to be, this would come out to be, and this one would be an even trickier one to figure out why it's ohms, but it is, just trust me that this 2 pi times the frequency times L um, gives you the uh, inductance. Okay, now here's the, big idea. here's the big idea. What happens to my inductance here, to my capacitive inductance, if I increase the frequency on my generator? What's it going to do? Is it going to help the current or is it going to impede the current? What's it going to do? impede the current because this is a straight linear relationship. In other words, if we do this, for those of you over there, I'll, I'll draw it over here in a minute. Okay. All right. So if, if we do this, if we've got XL to the frequency, that looks just like that. As I increase the frequency, XL increases, therefore the resistance increases, therefore it slows down the current. Okay. Because V V equals, um, v equals uh, IR. So if I increase R, I's got to go down. Because just because I increase the frequency doesn't mean I increase the voltage. That's, mis that's a misnomer that we make with generators and stuff like that. Oh, I'm increasing the voltage. No, you're not. You're just keeping the same voltage. It's just bouncing back and forth faster. Okay? But the polarity stays the same. It's just going much faster. It's now going 75 bouncy backy forthies or whatever you want to call it round trips there you go it's doing 75 round trips in a second by 60 or 100 or if you go to Europe and Asia remember they they slow it down they they do 50 Hertz but they increase the voltage actually all right okay so that slows so that's the way that works all right now then so let's move on so it's 2 pi FL da, 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 yep so I've, okay, y'all, when you go to church, do you ever count how many pages the sermon is or anything like that? That was page one, all right, here we got about nine to go. No, just kidding. Actually, we do have quite a few to go, but we're going to do some actual work here in a second. All right, oh, these are phaser lines. Ooh, phase diagram. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now we're going to start putting this all together. Okay, we're going to start putting this all together. We're going to have our impedance, and we're going to have, so we're going to put, we're going to put an R with, uh, looks like we're putting it with a C this time. Okay, and so here's your phaser diagram. You've got R going this way, C going this way, XC going this way. All right, and then you've got your Z, which is your, which is your ohms, again. Then Ohm's Law reads that the IMS the root mean square of the uh, amperage times Z, where Z is equal to, now this is just when we have, this is just when we have an XC circuit or a uh, capacitive reactance with a, re with a resistor, okay? So we have, so we just got two things. We just have a RC circuit right now. We don't have the RLC circuit yet, okay? And then when we just add when well, we just add the Z part. Now notice, look, looky, looky. XL is going up. Its phase line goes up. Let's go back one. What does XC's phase line look like? Which way is it going? It's going down. So those two oppose each other. All right? Remember what I said. Uh, or remember the diagram um, when you've got an RLC circuit, when you have an inductor and a capacitor, it's like having two ends of a spring, all right? Or when you start a spring oscillating. You stretch it out, that could be like your capacitor. Your E field is completely charged up. Boom, you let it go. The charge goes through there, the current goes through there, and then it smashes in, and, and oh, at this juncture, the B field has nothing in it. The inductor has nothing in it. 
And then when it starts to go, then the B field, as the, as the energy in the capacitor decreases, as the energy in the capacitor decreases, the energy in the inductor increases, all right, slowing it down, all right? So they oppose each other, all right? So you'll see when we put them all together then, we're going to get XL minus XC squared to get this Z, which is our impedance. We're just doing, these are like vectors, but they're not. They're called phasers, okay? But they're not really vectors because they're, they depend on the angle, okay? All right, okay. All right, and so then when we get it all said and done, when we get it all said and done, then the um, Z is equal to the resistor squared plus, now, Remember, you subtracted these two vectors here. Here they are subtracted. So you got XL minus XC. Because here you had XL was real big. XC come down like this. You subtract the two. All right, so you subtract the two. And you wind up with XL minus XC squared. So it's just the good old Pythagorean <laughs> theorem type thing. And to find the, the tangent of the angle, slide this vector over here. And so it's the opposite over the adjacent gives you the tangent of the angle. Now that angle becomes important when we start talking about the power dissipated, the average power dissipated in one of these circuits, okay? Which I think is the next thing we're gonna do. But I wanted to, before we go any further with this, I think we should scribble some stuff down so you can actually see how these things look and work. All right, yeah, here's a good one. Here's a good problem. So I'm going to turn on the uh, dot cam here. Is it on? It is. What page am I on in the book? Uh, 738. 738. Oh, that's not very good. We need some lamps. Turn the lamps on here. Turn on the lamps. Do, do, do. Okay. And then let's zoom in. So we get rid of all that ugly stuff up there. There we go. Zoom in. Now all that shows up is my ugly hairy hands all right now all right here's the problem it says an RC circuit so we're going to be dealing with an RC so oh I don't have to go that far down okay so we're going to de be dealing with an RC circuit here okay got an RC circuit and the resistor is a hundred ohms R equals 100 ohms okay and it says that the, it's the capacitor is 15 time, uh, times 10 to the negative 6 farads. And actually in the book it said microfarads. And um, the root mean squared voltage, VRMS, is 120 volts. Okay. And the frequency is 60 hertz. All right. Electricians like to get their freak on. Anyway, sorry. Okay, now. Didn't. Because that's what we used to call them. You got your freaks. You know, your frequency. Because modifying your frequency is also how you modify your radio. So you can change your capacitance. So you can get your thing. Sorry. All right. Anyway, that should be a t-shirt. I'm sure it's already a t-shirt. But anyway. Okay. Now then. Um, 120 volts. 100, da, 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 da. okay, and the question is this, the question is this, um, where is the question, I see, a, okay, what is the RMS current in the circuit when it's driven by 120 volt, what's the IRMS, so here's what we got to do, we know that this, we know VRMS, so here's what it wants us to find, here's what it wants us to find, the VRMS, okay, now, what this circuit looks like is this. We got a capacitor, we got a resistor, got a capacitor, got a resistor, and we got our little AC generator down here. Okay? This is what it looks like. Here's our capacitor, and here's our resistor. All right, now then, the voltage across here, and the voltage across here. Now, what did we learn about something in series? Because this will be the next question. The V1. Here's a voltage here and a voltage here, right? Now, we learned earlier that if we just, in DC circuits, if we have 
a resistor and a resistor like this, we just V1 plus V2 should equal that DC power source, right? Not so in this case. V1 squared plus V2 squared, take the square root of it, will equal the root mean square of power source of this, right? Because that's what they say in question B. They say verify that Ohm's law holds. Well, Ohm's law straight series doesn't hold. You've got to do the root mean square of the thing. So we'll, we'll do it. All right, so anyway, VRMS equals Ohm's law says IRMS times Z. Well, in this case, Z equals the square root of R squared. You always put your R first, plus XC squared in this case. Okay? And XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times C. Now, here's how I do these on my calculator. I just go ahead and go 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance, enter, get my answer, then hit x to the minus 1, then flip it over. All right? I don't do the 1 divided by because I screw it up every time when I get to the scientific notation part for my capacitance, every time I make a mistake. So I just multiply these straight out and then hit x to the minus 1. Your x to the minus 1 key, it's your magic key, boom, flips it over, good. And you got xc is equal to 177 volts. 177 volts, what an idiot. 177 ohms, sorry. Okay, and then so we got Z is equal to square root of 100 squared plus 177 squared, which equals point f uh, something. What the heck did that equal? Did they show me? 203. And so the VRMS of this thing, am I running out of space here? Yep, sure am. So the VRMS of this thing is equal to, or the IRMS, uh, it's 203. Yeah, it's 120 over 203, which equals about 0.59 amps. Okay? It's about 0.59 amps. Now, if we go to here, we go to here. Uh, so if I look at V1 is equal to 0.59 times the XC was 177, or yeah, times 177. That actually equals like 104 volts. And then I get V2 is equal to 0.59 times 100 volts, or 100, gosh dang, 100 ohms, and that equals 59 volts. Now, notice, if I just add these two together, 104 plus 59, I get 163, which is much greater than the 120. So, but remember, we're dealing with root mean squared. So if I take 104 squared plus 59 squared, but actually if I take V equals the square root of 104 squared plus 59 squared, guess what I get? I get 120. So it checks. Because we're dealing, remember, we're dealing with AC circuits. Okay? Dealing with AC things. But actually, Almost, if, if I would take, if I would go ahead and if I hadn't rounded this 0 0.59, if I hadn't rounded this 0 0.59 and took the, took the 0 0.59 times 177, I'd gotten like 105 here, and I'd gotten like, or almost 110 here, and I'd gotten like 100, and, or, or, or and I'd gotten about 65 here. If I'd added those two together, that's at their max. That's at their complete max, which the voltage here divided by the square root of 2, I'd get these two added together. If you take 120 times the square root of 2, I mean, take one tw that gives you your maximum voltage. If you add those two together, that's what you'll wind up with. Okay? A lot of stuff to kind of keep straight. So the main thing that you're going to have to keep straight for the exam, I'll tell you right now. I'm just going to say, here's an RLC circuit. Here's the frequency. Here's the capacitance. Here's the resistance. Here's the inductance. Find the current, da 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 da, you know, do just it, it'll probably be even broken down. Find the uh, reactive capacitance, find the uh, reactive inductance. So you'll find XC, you'll find XL, find Z, 
find the impedance, find the current. So you just walk you through 20 points, boom, five points each for each one of those things. Real straightforward. I learned my lesson, okay? Learned my lesson for the last one. But I thought that was good for you, last test. It's good for you. Y'all need to be humbled every once in a while. Outside of Orgo. Anyway, what's that? Oh, cell bio. That's because you're biology majors. Major something easy like this. All right, anyway. All right, now then. Okay, now let's put it all together. Putting it all together. Okay? Here we go. This is 21.6, but wait. Let's go back to the computer let's, before we put it all together. So we just did those two. What else we got? All right. Okay. Let's talk about power here real quick. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to put it all together. The other one was we just added an inductor to it. It's no big deal. All right. Add an inductor. Yeah, we better do it. We better do it because you'll see it. You'll see something like it. So here's the next problem. Let's do this. Let's go to the dot cam here. Back to the dot cam. To the back cave. 740. Page 740. All right. Now then, this one says you got an RLC circuit. It's got a little bitty dinky resistance. It's got a resistance here of, whoa, ugh. All right, anyway, sorry. That kind of looked like some kind of monster. Or something. <laughs> the claw from Liar Liar. All right. C equals and our inductance. Ah, what's the SI units for inductance? What is it? Henry's, Henry's right. It's the name of a rabbit I raised. Anyway. Yeah. There you go. All right, now then. The RMS is good old 120 volts. We're showing our we're showing our United States biased here, okay? And so guess what the freaks are? 60 60 hertz, okay? All right. So now, what they want us to do is they say, okay, find the overall impedance. This is a great test question. Question A says, what is Z? Part B is. Um, What's the IR, the current? Now, I might be sneaky, too, and ask you what the peak current is, too. And what's the peak voltage, all right? Just multiply by the square root of 2. When you get IRMS, when you get the root mean squared, just multiply by the square root of 2 to get the peak voltage and the um, peak current. C. And C was, what's the phase angle? Okay, because the phase angle is kind of important. All right, so here we go. Well, this is pretty straightforward. It looks like this. Z is going to equal the square root of 25 squared plus, now make sure you get this straight. You're going to take XL minus XC, then square that. Okay, so you take XL, you take the uh, um, reactive inductance minus the reactive capacitance, XL minus XC, and square that. Okay? Oh, but what do you have to do first? You have to find XL, which is uh, 2 pi F times the inductance. You got to find XC, which is 1 over 2 pi F times the capacitance. Plug in all those numbers, and you wind up with Z equals 64.9 ohms. You can go run these numbers at home. 64.9 ohms and verify them. Okay? And then, hey, now we're cooking with gas. Now we can find the VRMS. We can find the current without any trouble. Just divide that, looks like it's going to be about point, what? Well, what, 120 divided by 60, oh, it's almost going to be point uh, 2 
it's almost going to be two. So the IR, the, the current, <laughs> the root mean square current is going to be 120 over 64.9, which comes out to be about 1.85 amps. Okay. And then last but not least, the phase angle. Exactly. Okay, did y'all hear Abigail? She said, hey, so to get my peak amperage, I'd multiply this by the square root of 2. Yes, you would. What do you think? Multiply it by the square root of 2. Same thing. Same thing. So your peak voltage, yeah. All right. Now, here we go. Now, all you got to do, if you're, thinking, if you're thinking about the good old Pythagorean theorem, where this is your Y component and this is your X component, y over x, then you can always get your phase angle without any trouble. Because you're just going to do this. You say, okay, well, the tangent of y, xl minus xc over r, and so it's the inverse of xl minus xc over r equals my phase angle, which in this case comes out to be 64.9 degrees, I think, or is it 67.3? Uh, phase angle equals, sorry about that, 67.3 degrees. All right? Now then, now then, now then, now then. This becomes important because to find the average power, all right, to find the average power, the thing, y'all can't see over all this hardware, can you? It's craning all over the place. Ugh. <clears throat> now I'm stuck. Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, now, so, yeah, I should have turned this sideways anyway. Okay, anyway, now then, the, the power is dissipated through what? Only the resistor, okay? But since that current's always changing, so, and since the voltage is always changing, to find the power, the average power can kind of be kind of tricky. P equals IV, but which IV is it, and all that kind of stuff. So, here's what we do. We say that the power dissipated through this circuit, and they went through a nice little explanation of it, which um, at 2.33 on a Friday afternoon is probably not what we should do. But anyway, they went through a nice explanation of this. Once you find this little phase angle here, he becomes important. Electrical engineers, people who run power companies are always watching the phase angle because they want to know how much power they're generating kicking out there so is equal to this is equal to um, now I'm stuck hold on a second because what's your normal power equation what's it normally say yeah P equals IV very good very good and that's what we're doing here however there's two ways to write it P equals IRMS VRMS and you are not done you are not done here. Exactly. You got to take the cosine times the angle. Now you might be going, well, why do I got to take the cosine times the angle? Because you do. There you go. Now, the, the reason is, the reason is um, because your VR, because you, you got to take the Y part over here. Let me show you. It has to do with your phase angles here. Here's your VR. Here's your voltage. Here's your, uh, well, I should put that capital R, okay? And then here's your um, VZ, okay? Uh, okay, your voltage caused by Z. And then this is your VRMS. And so the cosine. Is that right? Something like that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So the cosine of this angle is equal to VRMS or is equal to VR over VRMS. And you can't see what I'm doing at all. So, so here's what happens. Notice when I put this cosine in here, I get VR times over VRMS. So the VRMS cancels. And so I get the IRMS times the voltage is, times the uh, 
um, voltage that's going through the resistor. That's why. But it's just easier to do it this way. Or you can also write it this way. What's, what's another thing for power? What's another equation for power? Yeah, yeah there we go. I squared times what? R. So if this time it's not going to be R, well, yeah, you can, you can have it be R or you can do this. You can do Z cosine theta. Okay? Now, if you do R, don't put the cosine in there. And I think it'll still work. Maybe. I hope. All right. All right. Now then. Now, here's the cool part about this whole thing. Here's what, here's, here's what, oh, sorry. Did y'all need to scribble some more? I'm sorry. All right. Anyway, now, what we're going to do is on your radio dial, what numbers are you looking at there? When it, when, like, if you're, like if you're old like me and, and listen to 89.3, okay? What, what, what is 89.3 what? It's frequency, right, megahertz, right? Because FM is in megahertz, AM is in kilohertz, okay? So FM, FM frequency is much faster, okay? Much faster, much shorter, much shorter waves, okay? Whereas AM is big old long loopy waves because it's, it's got a shorter, it's a, it's a longer frequency, okay? All right. That's why FM... If you, any of you ever been, not, you guys would never listen to AM radio, but anyway, uh, if you're listening to AM radio and you pull into the parking garage, like if you're listening to sports talk radio, which like if you, you're feeling like dumbing yourself down, okay, listen to sports talk radio, all right, anyway, um, you, uh, you can't hear it in the parking garage here on campus because it's got those big long wavelengths that can't find you, but the FM you can kind of hear. Because it's got the shorter wavelengths that are coming in and they can get to you. Okay? But AM carries a lot further. You can listen to you can listen to an AM station almost past Columbia from here. But anyway. Alright. But anyway, here's the here's here's really what we use all this for. Oh good. Yeah, we've got seven minutes to well actually I've got twelve, but I'll take seven. All right. All right, here's, here's really what we're after. When we, everything has, everything, everything has a frequency to it. Every, every mineral, every molecule, every atom, every human body, it, everything out there has a frequency. Anything made of matter, which is most everything that I can think of, all right, that we, there is antimatter, and I don't want to get into that, okay, because I don't know anything about it, all right? But anyway, um, everything that has matter has a natural frequency to it that, that bounces back and forth, okay? Vibrates back and forth, do, 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 do. okay? And so, a natural, that's, that's called the resonant frequency. And so what happens... Remember when I showed you last semester at 210 that Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsing that got the big amplitude going? That's because it hit the winds, made it start swinging at its resonant frequency. And when you, it's just like, um, it's just like when you're pushing your little brother or sister or you're babysitting somebody on a swing. Okay, when they swing back, if you add, if you kind of get into their rhythm and really start pushing them, they get higher and higher with very little more energy you're adding to it, okay? But if you stop them short, then that's dampening, and then they don't, then they don't swing near as high. Well, the same thing happens here. So everything has a natural resonant frequency, F0, okay? And F0 is equal to this. The resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L times C. Now, what the heck? How the heck did you come up with that? Here's how. Things are in resonance. Things are in resonance if this is the case. XL equals XC. Okay? So if XL equals XC, now the capacitor and the inductor, we can't make those two things equal to each other. 
All right? But what we can make equal to each other is the frequency. So you wind up with this thing. XL is what? 2 pi times the resonant frequency. And XC is 1 over 2 pi times the resonant frequency. Oh, times L, sorry. Times L times C. Duh, I knew something was, I was like, something's missing there. There we go. Now, if I solve for F naught, if I go ahead and solve for this FO, I'm going to multiply both sides by FO to get him out of here. So I wind up with FO squared equals 1 over 4 pi squared L times C. Okay? And so FO, take square root of both sides, equals 2 pi square root of LC. All right? Now then. Now then. So, in other words, let's say uh, KCUR. KCUR is out there broadcasting at 89.3 megahertz times 10 to the 6th hertz. All right, KCUR, that's that, it's the old people's station. All right, it's all that NPR, yeah. All right, but anyway, um, so they're, they're broadcasting at this. So what, that's their FO. Now, so what my radio, what my car radio has is it's got, a, it's got a capacitor on it, and you'd see it in the circuit. The capacitor would look like this. Here's the capacitor. Here's the symbol for it. This means it's variable. In other words, I'm, it, I'm able to change this capacitor. Uh, when I change the capacitor, then that changes this thing. So that when this guy is sending out this signal, I can change my capacitor so that it is going at that frequency, and boom. We, I can hear it, okay? It comes in and catches the radio and makes sense because all those little ones, because all those little ones and zeros that are put on there that are coming in, well, that's analog, but um, anyway, no, that's digital, digits, ones, zeros, okay? But anyway, all those information, in other words, they can put, they can put a, a bunch of ones and zeros per second on there, 89 million of them, yes? It depends. It depends on the pack capacity. Ooh, did you hear that? Ooh, bonus question. Because he said capacitance, capacitance, hell, I forgot the equation for it. What is it? It's the area, what is it? A echo naught over D? Is that the capacitance or the distance between the two? Isn't that it? Permittivity. What's E naught again? Remember? Permittivity of free space. I know that. But here's the thing for the capacitor. Now, it depends on the capacitor. I would guess, what do you guess it's doing? What would be easier to change? Yeah, the distance. Exactly. That's exactly what it's doing. Or, uh, here's something else it could be doing too. What if it was removing and placing dielectrics in there too? It could also do that to change the capacitance. Okay? That's that whole thing in material science and um, solid state, which we'll get into advertising for 350 for next fall for some of you that are more, some of you that don't have anything else to do, like I said. Um, all right. Okay, so there's very good. Good question. All right, because we, we'll, I think a lot of it might be changing both the diameter and the dielectric that's kind of sliding it up and down in there. Um, the old timey radios used air. They had the, there's a picture in the book of the old-timey radios and how they expanded the plates and stuff like that. Okay. All right. I think that's enough for today. Definitely enough. Have a safe, safe weekend. Very, very safe. Kenna, did you bring a guest? Did you bring a guest? That's what I thought because it kept throwing me off. I was going, wait a minute. She's obviously flunking because I haven't seen her all semester. Now she's showing up. <laughs>